Dr. Dipendra has already briefed you that, uh, and I also promised you last Thursday that today I'll be speaking on the treatment aspect of this patient, uh, which we discussed in the last two on the last two Thursdays in succession. Uh, and before that, we had discussed a case of uh, Ewing sarcoma of the pelvis, emphasizing the grave prognosis in that case because of the extensive metastasis which had already occurred and the advanced stage of the malignancy and the fact that it was a pelvic Ewing sarcoma uh, that itself carries a poor prognosis. But this case is different. This case is one of the extremities, and I'll show you what we have done till now. The treatment is continuing, but let me show you how the we go about managing a case of Ewing sarcoma of the leg as we had arrived at in the previous session. So just a brief recap, as always. This patient presented, this was a six-year-old girl, presented to us with pain and swelling in the right leg uh, of recent duration, not very old. The pain was so severe that the patient needed to get up in the night with pain. There was no fever, no loss of appetite or weight. And this was the clinical picture. What we found was that the transverse dimension of the tibia was increased in comparison to the normal left side. And along with that, there was a irregular thickening of the cortex, primarily in the diaphyseal region of the tibia, primarily diaphyseal lesion. So we did discuss the x-ray of this patient last time and this was the x-ray showing periosteal reaction extensive onion peel type of periosteal reaction which is also known as the laminated type of periosteal reaction again look at the diaphyseal involvement in this particular bone the metaphysis is more or less free the same is in the lateral view you don't see any sequestration you see a destruction in, in the medullary canal, within the medullary canal. And this is uh, what we were talking about, that this uh, the, the two di diagnoses clinically that we can entertain in such a case would be Ewing sarcoma and chronic osteomyelitis. But when we did the biopsy, it was consistent with Ewing sarcoma, confirmed by immunohistochemical staining, which was positive for CD99, which is the hallmark of Ewing sarcoma. Now we come to today's discourse, and that concerns the management of this patient. We, in the previous sessions, have emphasized that in some in such cases, the management has to be multidisciplinary or multimodality. And what we do we mean by multidisciplinary or multimodality is that there are various experts from different fields which who are involved. First and foremost is the pathologist who gave us the diagnosis, the radiologist who did all the imaging, which is very important for planning the, the treatment protocol, the oncologist, the medical oncologist who would treat this patient with chemotherapy. And this patient was first subjected to pre-operative neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, once the pre-operative uh, pre neoadjuvant chemotherapy cycles were complete, 
the imaging was repeated and uh, the medical oncologist got back to me requesting for a surgical excision and we did decide on a surgical excision based on certain reports which we will just show you and this is been followed up this would be followed up by now what is known as adjuvant chemotherapy i hope all of you know the difference between neo adjuvant and adjuvant chemotherapy neo adjuvant chemotherapy is the chemotherapy which is given pre operatively and the primary primary role of neo adjuvant chemotherapy is to downsize the staging of the tumor to even non resectable tumors can be rendered resectable after neo adjuvant chemotherapy also it takes care of any uh distant metastasis which which may not have manifested itself so uh, so all those uh, distant metastases which are which have not yet manifested themselves can also go into a regression on the other hand adjuvant chemotherapy is usually the chemotherapy which has been given or instituted after the tumor has been removed so after the tumor population has been minimized we cannot claim that after tumor excision even the 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 the, the tiny cells which may be present in the blood stream have been eradicated but the bulk of the tumor the uh, sort of uh, the tumor cell population has been minimized that is the role of surgical excision and thereafter we give additional adjuvant chemotherapy to take care of these micro metastases which have still not manifested themselves in all those cases where the resection is suboptimal meaning thereby that the surrounding bed is has not been been tumor free there are still uh, you have had to do a marginal excision uh, a wide excision was not possible then in all those cases post operative radiotherapy is also added with this multi modality approach the overall 5 year survival rate of ewing sarcoma is in in today's time between 55 to 75% which is very encouraging because previously with uh with with uh, the individual approach of either a chemotherapy or chemotherapy and radiotherapy without excision surgery the survival rate was in the range of 10 to 15% well in our patient after the new adjuvant chemotherapy the patient was referred back to us and this is the comparative x ray picture that we thought we felt the patient was symptomatically much better the pain had already gone there was uh, fever was not there even initially and even now there was no fever the patient had gained weight and was looking much healthier and when we did the x ray of this patient what we find is on the right hand side is the post chemotherapy x ray the chemotherapy was given for almost 4 months in various cycles we will not go into the protocol of that if you are interested you can read about it the various drugs and and what is the protocol of new adjuvant you know the chemotherapy in ewing sarcoma of the leg you can read some literature but on the left hand side is the pre chemo x ray with all that extensive damage to the intramedullary region to the two cortices and the periosteal elevation and on the right side look at what what has happened the periosteal reaction has tremendously gone in for a regression and the 
intramedullary destruction has not increased at all. Rather, the cortical definition is much better now. Compare the cortical definition here, which is irregular, fuzzy, and it has become very well defined in this X-ray. So this gave us a clue that there is a good response to chemotherapy. So we did perform a post-chemo MRI also. On your left hand is the pre-chemo MRI showing extensive soft tissue involvement, periosteal elevation. Look at the severely enhancing lesion uh, on the left side, which is pre-chemotherapy. On the right side is the post-chemotherapy MRI. And look at what has happened. The periosteum is, uh, is elevated slightly, but much of it is. Look at the regression. This much of periosteum has uh, gone in for uh, a, a regression sort of a thing. Even the cortical enhancement has diminished tremendously and it is localized to this area within the bone within the bone. This is the 